ओके सो वी विल कैलकुलेट बॉइंट फोर्स ऑन अ बॉडी सबमर्ज इन अ लिक्विड एट रेस्ट सो फर्स्ट केस वी विल कंसीडर अ फुल्ली सबमर्ज बॉडी अ केस व्हेयर द बॉडी इज फुल्ली सबमर्ज सो दिस इज अ बॉडी ऑफ आर्बिट्ररी शेप व्हिच इज फुल्ली सबमर्ज इनसाइड अ लिक्विड एट रेस्ट it may sink or whatever may happen but it's fully submerged at this point of time so here uh, if you divide the body into thin cylinders that can be done obviously say consider a very thin cylinder right this cylinder is made of the material of the body Uh, this is also having a cross section alpha and say the top point of the cylinder say uh, from the top point of the cylinder the pressure acting is e1 so this pressure so the force e1 alpha the force due to liquid pressure and from the bottom it is e2 alpha and for this cylinder the difference in height of these two points is h so on the cylinder on the thin cylinder rather on the thin cylinder of cross section alpha and height h the net force due to liquid pressure is obviously p2 is greater than p1 so p2 alpha minus p1 alpha that, that is equal to p2 minus p1 into alpha so p2 minus p1 we have derived this it's h rho g alpha c remember this rho is density of the liquid this derivation was done before p2 minus p1 equal to h rho g so that's so h so we can write h alpha times rho g so h into alpha is the volume of the thin cylinder so in this way you can construct many more cylinders to cover up the entire body right? so you can uh, think the body made up of this thin vertical cylinders itself so the total bind force or the net force on the body due to liquid pressure vertical force on the body due to liquid pressure uh, that is known as the buoyant force is equal to c as you can see it's it's uh, sum of the volumes right so sum of the so on the thin cylinder the force was volume of the thin cylinder into rho g so here you get volume of the body into rho g why it's remember volume of the body but rho is the density of the liquid not of the body so we denote buoyant force by b so b is equal to v rho g where v is volume of the body and as it is fully submerged so it's the submerged volume also and there cannot be any horizontal force because you know that in the same horizontal level the uh, points have same pressure the 
points in same horizontal level in a liquid at rest have same pressure so if you consider the body again if you consider it made of uh, thin horizontal cylinders so on each horizontal cylinder the force due to pressure from the left and the right they are equal so those will balance this force from the right and the le left will balance so uh, for the whole body there will be no net horizontal force and that is obviously if the liquid is at rest now let's look at a partly submerged body then uh, also there will be a point force so this is the free surface of the liquid and it's partly submerged and here also you divide the body into thin cylinders you take uh, this one of such thin cylinders is the shaded one this is having cross section alpha right and uh, the height there uh, this height of the lowest point of the cylinder is h from the free surface of the liquid this height is taken from the free surface of the liquid so considering the flat surface so there it is p naught plus h rho g absolute pressure into alpha and from top there is atmospheric pressure p naught into alpha uh, see actually the atmospheric pressure is p naught on the surface of the liquid and on uh, the surface of this body as well because the body if the body is so high i mean i mean so tall body rather that it extends from the earth to the moon then obviously the atmospheric pressure will change right then it's not p not is not same on the surface of the liquid and and on the surface of the body as well so the height is reasonable so that on the top on the top surface it is so what is the net force due to liquid pressure and air or say atmospheric pressure this combined the net up thrust or net upward force on the thin cylinder is obviously you subtract so h rho g into alpha so h a uh, sorry h alpha into rho g so h alpha is the submerged volume of the cylinder of this thin cylinder rather so the net bind force the net upward force on the body that is b buoyant force is equal to so if you add up the submerged volumes then what volume you will get the uh, obviously if you add up the submerged volumes you get the total submerged volume this is shaded by green so we call v so v rho g so v is the submerged volume submerged volume of the body or the so so this v rho g is buoyant force is v rho g now it is also same as the weight of the liquid displaced because in absence of the uh, body there this uh, volume v this uh, volume and would have been occupied by the liquid itself now uh, the weight of that part of the liquid that volume v of the liquid is v rho g so this is the archimedes principle buoyancy is weight of the submerged volume of the sorry weight of the displaced volume of the liquid and 
also by the same logic as you can split it into horizontal cylinders so as the liquid is at rest so in the same horizontal level you have same pressure so there is no horizontal force due to liquid pressure all the force is vertical only now here we will consider the case where the body will be inside an accelerated vessel containing a fluid now we will consider the first case the vessel accelerating upward up at a at a rate a and you have a body submerged so let it be partly or fully submerged so the submerged volume is v. if it is fully submerged the submerged volume is uh, same as the volume of the solid itself so let v this shaded uh, one be the submerged volume so here the point force will be obviously v rho into g plus a the reason is quite obvious why it is g plus a because at uh, this if you want to derive it this way at a certain height h below the free surface the pressure happens to be h rho g plus a we have derived it before h rho g plus a obviously plus p naught and uh, if you consider this cylinder from top it is p naught times alpha so in this way you can find out the net force if you consider all these cylinders making up the whole body then the buoyant force happens to be v rho g plus Or, or if you can see from the vessel frame or in alternate way if from the vessel frame from frame of the vessel the effective gravity or effective value of G is uh, G dash is equal to G plus because you know this very well that so from an accelerating frame or accelerated frame apart from this mg if the particle is having mass m as the frame is accelerating there is a pseudo force ma as well so the net force is equal to m into g plus a so in this way point force will be v rho g plus a and you have a body submerged say this time uh, we can consider it fully submerged even it can be partly submerged also say uh, this case will consider the vessel accelerating horizontally at a rate a then let's see for this horizontal accelerated vessel this is a the acceleration of the vessel now buoyant force will be same v rho g that is obviously true buoyant force upwards v rho g now if you consider the body made up of thin cylinders in horizontal level then as we have derived before the pressure to the left and the right are not same consider the cylinder of length l right so if you want i can make a bigger diagram this one the body it is fully immersed fully immersed inside a liquid even if it sinks there are some water is there at the bottom so consider this cylinder thin cylinder 
of laying tail and cross section alpha cross section is alpha so from this side suppose the pressure is E1 so force is E1 alpha and from the right side force is P2 alpha so on the cylinder what is the net force so you can write on the cylinder on the horizontal cylinder the net force to the right obviously net force will be to the right is P1 minus P2 times alpha and this P1 minus P2 already we have derived it is L rho A into alpha so L into alpha into rho A so L into alpha is the volume of the cylinder this horizontal cylinder so therefore on the body the net force in horizontal direction is then you add up the volumes of the cylinders to get the total volume V rho A. So this is the thrust force or this is the net sideways thrust we can say so apart from the point force you have a force along the x-axis that means in the direction of acceleration of the vessel there is a force f x is equal to v rho times a 